did what he, what he could, you know, ram as a male lamb. And then he saw what? A male goat. That's the he goat. These animals represent nations. Nations that will be, that are empires. Uh, these empires that had fought against Israel. The same nations that King Nebuchadnezzar saw in his vision. Y'all remember his vision? You remember the gold head, the silver arm, and then what? You get to the, the stomach area, it was what? It was uh, brass, the two legs, iron, and then the feet were what? Clay and, and, uh, and iron. Iron and clay mixed together. Well, in the vision that he gave Daniel, in the second vision, Daniel see these animals. And these animals are going to represent those same kingdoms. The ram with the two horns represents the Medo-Persian Empire. On, on that statue that King Nebuchadnezzar saw, Medo-Persian was represented by the silver, the silver arms. Are y'all with me? Now those we just read, he says the he goat did what? Ran into the ram. The he goat is the Grecian Empire, Alexander the Great. See, each empire basically would defeat the former empire and take over. So in the vision, we saw the Hegel running into the ram. It means that Alexander the Great with the Greeks will attack Medo Persia and do what? Would, would defeat them and take over. Now, you may be wondering, what does all this got to do? But I'll study. Let's go to be funny. Because I want, I, want, I want you to look at something here. Uh, verse 8. Therefore the he goat waxed very great. So it said the goat got strong. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it come up what notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Now, when we read, we look at something in the pack of the game. The, the, the king of the north and uh, we, we're actually in Daniel chapter 8 right now. Now, uh, this he goat with this notable horn that, that got strong, the horn broke. And then what happened? Four notable horns sprung up. No, I mean it's leading to that same thing, but the toes are not in this in this vision. That's another vision. That's a separate vision. Imagine the goat with one horn, one noble horn, and what happened? The horn broke. Ah, oh, you have to get confused. You get confused with another vision. The horn broke. And when a horn broke on that goat, four horns sprung up. Now, I said a minute ago, the Bible is so marvelous and so accurate because the he goat represents the Grecian Empire. Who was the, who was the leader of the Grecian Empire? Even my young folks over here, they take a history book, though, this. The Grecian Empire, or the Greeks. Y'all hadn't had world history yet? Alexander the Great. Y'all heard of Alexander the Great before? Alexander the Great uh, was the leader. What happened to Alexander the Great? He died at a very young age. I think he was about 32 years old when he died. When he died, he did not have an heir. His son was a baby. So his son was not old enough to do what? To take over. So his four top generals said, what we're going to do, we're going to rule the Grecian Empire until this boy gets old enough to what? Become the king. They split into four different sections. I'm going to go over those sections in a few more minutes. The intentions were that as they grew four different parts, that when that boy get old enough, that he would come back to the throne and rule over the Grecian Empire again. But however, when they split it up, 
they got to fight each other. Two of them became stronger than the others. The king of the north and the king of the south. Are y'all halfway with me now? Halfway. I won't go too fast. I can see all this in my mind because, you know, I'm a history major. And that's why I want to call up my high school folks over here that have been taking world history lately. Hopefully they will go help out a little bit. But I understand. I understand about history. I understand about, you know, class too. Sometimes don't all depends on what the teacher taught and how they taught it. Now, look at verse 9. And out of one of them came from the little horn, which wax exceeding great toward the south and toward the east, toward the pleasant land. Now, pleasant land here, if you read with me, that's talking about Israel. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and step upon them. Yet he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Guess who this is talking about? It's talking about the Antichrist. Here. The Antichrist in this particular chapter, Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 11, it showed that the Antichrist probably is going to come from Syria or from the Syrian impact. Now let me explain something to you. When we say Syria, we talk about the ancient Syrian empire uh, that will come up after Alexander the Great died. That does not mean, and this is careful, that does not mean that the Antichrist would necessarily come from the nation of Syria today. Why? Because the Syrian empire is larger than the country of Syria today. Are you all following what I'm saying? Am I? So, uh, if that be the case, then you, got to, you have to look at Syria, you have to look at Lebanon, uh, you have to look at uh, Iran, uh, Jordan. Let me see what else is in that area. You got parts of Turkey. So, all of yeah, they're close to you. But all of those were part of the Syrian Empire after the Grecian or the Greek Empire broke apart. Okay? Now, uh, I can go on and on, and, and I don't want to go too far into this. And what I'm going to do, I want you to go back to your sheet. And I'll see how we wrap this up. I'm trying to see how we bring some understanding to you right up here. If you go back to what we was reading and go toward the middle of the sheet, in that in, in the middle of the sheet it says, after his death. Do you all see that? I'll read that sentence. I want y'all to start there with it. After his death, the king was divided among his four children. Can you all see this? Everybody see this? We on the sheet that said the king of the north. It looks like this. King of the north. All right, let me go ahead again. After his death, who death? This is talking about Alexander the Great. The kingdom was divided among his four children. It gives you the names. Ptolemy took the area of Egypt, Arabia, and Palestine. Cassander took Macedonia and Greece. Lysismus, I know I mispronounced it, took the area of Thrace and Bithynia. And Seleucus I, the first brother, took Syria. Today, their territory would cover generally the areas of Egypt, Greece, Turkey, and Syria, respectively. These four kings began to war among them. That's what I just told you. The, uh, these wars covered approximately 150 years. So, even when these guys died, their sons kept fighting, grandsons. And then it would the reign of Atticus, Atticus Epitaphane. It gives you the years that he, he actually reigned. Now, it is a historical fact that Atticus Epitaphes came out of Syria, one of the four kings. 
in the height of his power, he went into Jerusalem and desecrated the temple, abused and killed the priests of God, went to the altar, upon which all the holy things and clean mountains were sacrificed, and as an insult to Israel God and the holy worship, he slaughtered a swine upon the altar. This was an abomination, but it was not the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy that you see in Daniel 9 27. Then we go a little bit further, I'm going to talk about it, see if you can clear it up some. Atticus Epiphanes was king of the Lord from Syria. And therefore, here's what this is a very important point here, and therefore was a type of Antichrist. But he was not that prince to come of which Daniel wrote, Daniel 9 and 27. So let me let me stop there and explain something to you. After, once again, after the Grecian Empire broke up into four parts, the four generals who had intended to bring the impact back together once Alexander the Great made the song got over the rule, uh, they started fighting each other. And over 150 years, these wars will last in future generations until you get to this, this character called Atticus Epitopides, who is king of the north. And he, he continued to fight the king of the south. The king of the south was coming from Egypt. He will win against the king of the south. What's important about this, uh, uh, this bit of history, and Daniel saw this in Daniel chapter 8. He also talks about it even more in Daniel chapter 11. This man was a type of Antichrist. Because what did we just read a minute ago? He went into the house of God, the temple. Now this is, this is after Daniel is dead, but it's way before Jesus comes. He goes in there, and in essence he said, I'm God. He desecrated the temple by bringing a swine or a hog in there. Alright? His intents were really to destroy as many Jews as he could. Now what I'm talking to you about now is in history. They don't you know, I, I, was, I was kind of living these, these young ladies over here. They don't generally go that deep into history on a high school level. And many world history uh, courses in college, you had to get into some, some of the higher history courses really get into this, this piece of history. But this happens. And I believe that God allowed it to happen because that same spirit of Antichrist that's going to come in the man at a later time, was in this guy, a ticket's epitopay. Because the Antichrist is going to do the same thing. And you know, it's something else. Because remember that fallen angel that down there, they're going to be released? Uh -huh. so that gave um, Alexander the Great the power to conquer? Uh -huh. Is it, he's going to be released and give the power to the false prophet? Is it that one? And then now you said not just this? Not just false prophet, but to that Christ himself. And now this same demonic force is going to be released and come back again also. Uh -huh. Wow. Now, I know y'all probably wonder what's this Sharon talking about. She took mm -hmm. uh, class under me over there in the seminar. So she remembers something I taught there. But it is believed, I'm going to go ahead and say this real quick. It is believed, let me say this, when world empires come on the scene, and, and you're talking about ungodly people. Let, let's, let, let me mention Hitler, for example, because y'all are familiar with Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was very weak, right? Very wicked man. There are all kinds of books that out that talks about how Adolf Hitler was into the occult and that he was dealing with demon spirits. He had his top men. So Adolf Hitler was uh, possessed by demons, but not only demons. And you talk about a fallen angel, really, what you would refer to. These demonic forces and fallen angels, they actually inspire and give knowledge, even military knowledge, and other things to do in order to be, you know, victorious. Hitler 
wanted to destroy all the Jews. So you know the devil moved him against against what? Uh, uh, moved him against the Jews. And if the United States had not stepped in, because the United States, if you go back, said so history was trying to stay out of that war. If the United States had not stepped in when they did, it is believed that Hitler would have completely taken over Europe. And had he taken over Europe, it is believed that he would have controlled the world. Well, you got to understand the, 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 the power, military might, and even military uh, intelligence, yeah. many times come from the devil. All right? I said that to show you something that you're familiar with. These ancient world empires were demonic in many cases. Alexander the Great uh, did some marvelous things before he got to the age of 32. He had a, an army that was much smaller than his forces, but could move so quick. And he, had, he was a military genius. Militaries today, modern militaries, they are still studying what Alexander the Great did back then. Now they look from a natural standpoint, but theologians are looking at it from a spiritual standpoint. And what she was just telling you all, the scriptures bear that uh, there was a fallen angel that actually inspired and gave Alexander the Great the knowledge that he had in order to be the conqueror he was at that time. And so what happened? He got sick. He died. Scripture seemed to indicate that at that point God took that fallen angel and has locked that fallen angel in the bottomless pit. And more than likely that fallen angel is in the pit right now. But as she was saying, will be released again. And when he's released again, he's the one that's going to be motivating and helping the Antichrist. Am I making any sense? Any sense? Questions? We're going to come back to that again because what she's talking about, what she just said, it's all in the book of Revelation, so we're going to get a chance to discuss it again. Uh, I might even tonight look at something that's kind of related to that. I just want to kind of touch upon, upon this. Read the other information on your own, and we may come. Revelation chapter 8 and 9, some important chapters. Because up to this point, what have we really discussed? We've been talking about the wrath. Of, we've been talking about the wrath that's being what poured out on the earth, and 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 uh, you know we talked we talked about those seals being broken, those first four seals that were broken. The Antichrist is going to be what fight these wars, and that's going to cause a lot of calamities, a lot of death to happen because of the wars. But then as you get to uh, particularly the sixth seal, it speaks of the wrath of God. Look, remember last week we talked about the great earthquake? Y'all remember that? We talked about the meteors that would fall and, and, and what those meteors would do, especially if it's, a, if it's a, uh, one that's the size of a football stadium, hits the ocean. Now, we gave an example of one hit the ocean uh, out, out there on the west coast around Mexico that it will cause tidal waves, it causes cause tsunami that will wipe out all the coastal cities over there. It will cause the temperature to go up to about 700 degrees. If some of y'all remember what we talked about that last week? That's just one scenario that, that, that some of them say could happen uh, during the sixth season. So tonight we want, we, we, we're headed toward the seventh season. Uh, look, let's read verse 1, Revelation 8 and 1. And said, when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. This, this particular scripture here has puzzled many of the theologians. Uh, as to exactly what's going on here. The only thing we can see that is going on is this. First of all, heaven, as far as we know, is never silent. Why? You remember the beast 
that around the throne, day and night, what are they doing? All right. They're crying out, holy, holy, they're worshiping God. The 24 elders at times, they fall and worship. So there's worship. But here, about 30 minutes, silence. The only thing we can see uh, in, in this silence is, is that uh, the inhabitants of heaven are looking at what's about to happen on earth. And this silence comes because of the fact that what's getting ready to happen on earth is going to be more terrible than what earth has seen even before. Let's look at verse 2. Now, verses 2 through uh, 6 is another parenthetical uh, piece of information. I told you parenthetical. What did I tell you parenthetical was last week? Sister Ryan, do you remember? You don't have your notes. When you, when you have parenthetical information, it, it simply gives you some other details that's not uh, mentioned in these seals. And, and eventually, uh, we're going to be looking at the trumpet judgments. So, in other words, there's some other things that are going on at the same time that uh, the Lord did not give to John in terms of the seals. Well, so what happened? He said, I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having the golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it uh, with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire. The fire out and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So, we, we, we talk about the seven seals. Those are judgments. Now we get to see seven trumpets. So use your imagination. Think about seven angels. And all these angels got a long trumpet, a horn. And, and each one of them get ready to blow the trumpet. And when they blow the trumpet, it's going to reveal what? Some more judgments that are getting ready to fall on the earth. Now last week, we talked about the fact over there in Revelation of uh, what was that in the, in the seventh chapter? Uh, go back to go back to chapter seven, verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea. And I saw another angel sin from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. This is, this is referred to the 144,000. The seven trumpets could not be blown until the 144,000 had been sealed. Because whatever get ready to happen on earth, God's special protection is going to be upon the, the chosen 144,000. That is, they will not have to be worried about the wrath of God that's going to be pulled. Neither would God allow Satan and the Antichrist to bring them in harm. So let's look at trumpet. Let's look at trumpet number one. I intend to have another book here. And I don't have it with me, so because I have some notes in it. So we're going to deal with what we got here. In the first trumpet, the angel blew the horn, and when he blew the horn, hail, H-A-H-A-I-L, and fire mingled with blood was cast on earth. And a third part of the trees were burned up. Now can you imagine? Y'all know what hell is. Hell stuff. That's ice in it. But this scripture says what? It, it, it talks about the fact that you will have hell, and fire 
mingle with blood, fall on earth. And when this stuff falls on earth, a third part of the trees are going to be burned up. Now, we do believe that this third part of the tree, that this is not necessarily talking about the entire world, but that is referring to the old Roman Empire, which is around the Mediterranean Sea. Now, if you're talking about a third part of the Mediterranean Sea area, you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. It would affect all of Europe. It would affect uh, a big part of the Middle East. It would affect Northern Africa. This stuff is falling out of heaven, out of heaven. And it's burning up the trees. If it's burning up the trees, it's going to burn some other stuff. It's the uh, hail. Yeah, the hail, uh, fire, mingled with blood. And can you imagine the scientists are going to be baffled? They're going to try to figure out what is going on. Because how do you have ice and fire mixed together? But God can do anything. Because this is the wrath of God. She's jumping ahead a little bit. Look what the scripture said. Because uh, you know, it's in these trumpet judgments at the end, or well, in the middle, they said that they would not repent of this end. I believe not only trees gonna burn up, but I believe other vegetation gonna burn up. Now remember that. Why do we need trees? Trees. Yeah, trees give off oxygen. That's a part of the, the ecosystem. So a third part of the trees are destroyed and vegetated the area. It's going to have a direct effect on the people. Yeah. And, if it's not, and if it's not worldwide, it's going to affect the entire world. Think about this, the Mediterranean Sea. you got the Mediterranean climate. So a large part of your citrus fruits, you want to talk about agriculture, come from that part of the world. Food supply. It's going to be world food supply is going to be destroyed during this time. Let me ask a question. Right. right now, when the economy goes down, even though we over here in the United States, but we're being affected by it. You're going to be so affected. It's still, it's still happening to us, so it's going to still right. happen during the It time. is going to affect the entire world. Now, as I was studying this last night today, I was looking at these seven trumpets. Uh, I think some of these judges are going to be worldwide, too. Well, let me see wait till we get to that particular trumpet. But some of it's going to be worldwide. Not all of it's just going to be the Mediterranean Sea. Some of it is still going to be worldwide. Okay. Uh, the second trumpet. <laughs> I'm looking at Revelation 8 and 8. I'm the other folk nowhere. Anybody else know? Anybody else know? Anybody All right, and, and we can, uh, we do have sheets up here too because uh, Revelation 8, 8, that's going to deal with uh, verse 8 and 9. Oh, I know what I want to do. I forgot how much. Before I go to this, the second trumpet, look at these sheets here for a moment. The second page. All right. Right above it said verses 8 and 9. Okay. It said this plague, and I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going back to the hell, fire, and mingle with blood. This plague will affect, it says only vegetation of one third of the earth, while in Egypt it affected vegetation men and beef. Oh, okay, let me explain what he's talking about there. Um, I don't know if I make this very clear in, the, in, in typing this, uh, that. What they're doing, they make a comparison with the plagues that God put on the Egyptians during Moses' days. So they said that while in Egypt affected what vegetation made the beast, the plague that's getting ready to come, the first trumpet would affect all the vegetation. During this plague, agriculture process would be impossible, which I was just speaking of. I, the last sentence is what I really want to talk about. There has been a modern instance of this plague. It is said that in 1921, in Chief Say 
Yunnan, China, fire and hail mingled with blood fell all over the countryside. So this has actually happened in history and perhaps God allowed it to happen to give the world a little taste of it and maybe even to verify as to what's going to happen in the end days. So it has already happened. Uh, I don't think scientists were able to explain that particular plague. In verses 8 and 9, you have the second trumpet. And in the second trumpet, uh, he des John described it as a great mountain burning with fire that was cast into the sea. And a third part of the sea became blood. Now, of course, what theologians believe is it was not a mountain, but they believe it was a large meteor that looked like a mountain to John. Alright? That is on fire. And it falls into the Mediterranean Sea. And when it falls into the Mediterranean Sea, one third of the sea is going to what become blood. That's similar to what happened in Egypt. Y'all remember? Alright? So these plagues are kind of similar to what God did to Egypt. Now, again, the Mediterranean Sea is a huge sea. I used to know the dimensions of it. I can't, I can't remember right now. But it, it, it's, it's probably a thousand miles wide. And going north and south, I'm, I'm sure it's a good 500 more miles. So it's huge. One third of that sea turns in blood. How, how is that going to have an effect on the world? It's going to have an effect on fish, probably. The water is going to be poisoned. Fish are going to die, no doubt. Uh, ships are going to be destroyed. Out of the Mediterranean Sea, you have a lot of trade, world trade that goes through that sea. That's a very vital sea to the entire world. So it's going to disrupt the world's economy. All right? Uh, let's go to verse 10 and 11. Third angel, here's the third trumpet. And that fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, the third part of the water became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So, uh, no doubt this will be some other type of meteor, because we know stars are, uh, are too big to fall on Earth. But whatever falls this time is not just going to be in the sea or the ocean. It's going to hit the rivers. It's going to contaminate the drinking waters. And because of this, a lot of people are going to die during this time period. Now, here's something you need to think of too. Just in case theologians are a little off on this, in terms of whether this is just the Mediterranean Sea area, which is a large area, or it's the entire world. If it's the entire world, think about how much great this destruction is going to be. Verse 12 is the fourth trumpet. And the, the fourth angel sounded, the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the waters, so that the third part of them uh, was dark and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise you have darkness uh, if 33% of the sun is not is not giving off light then think about what that's going to do to the earth think about darkness that's going to that's do what it's going to cover the moon is not also, it won't be given this light. And it's possible that the moon will even uh, be kind of taken out of its place. And if that happens, you all know that the moon, uh, according to where the moon is, it affects the tides of the ocean. Y'all know that? Because the moon is pretty close to the earth. So if the moon is not in its proper place, that means you're probably going to have some great tidal waves, which is going to mean that you're going to have uh, coastal areas that are going to be flooded. You got darkness. If you got darkness during the daytime, 
that has a, a way of affecting even the mind, your mind. All right? So you're going to have some mental disorders. Okay? Question him. Yes. So when the tidal waves hit, is it going to hit all of us at one time? Or <laughs> well, they would. Let's, let's put it this way. They were not saved. They were not saved when the rapture takes place. Now, there will, be, there will be people who will get saved. We talked about that last week. The 144,000 are going to carry the gospel. And in, in Revelation, uh, what was it, Revelation chapter 6, the souls that were on the altar, the souls that were on the altar were men and women who had gotten saved but got their heads cut off. So, so you just say after the rapture, you're not going with everybody else? You're, you're going to be in the middle in lingo? Let me see if I understand what you're saying. You said about being in lingo. Let me just put this with Suzanne. If you're not caught up in the rapture, you will be left here to experience all this stuff we're talking about. Okay. All right? There will be people who will get saved. But when these people that will get saved, they're going to have a hard time trying to survive. It's going to be totally different than, as opposed to what's going on now. You know, because I have to deal with the mark of the beast. I have to deal with folk who want to kill them because... They decide that they want to live a, a, a you know, save life. And uh, it's going to be pretty bad. But going back to your first question about the tidal waves, the people that probably get killed from the tidal waves are those, those cities and people who live on the coast. You take like a Biloxi or a Gunport, New York City area, you know, if a tidal wave takes place, and those people that may face death in situations like that. Yes. Well, uh, they more than likely they are going to be had. More than likely they are going to be had. But now think about this now: the, the period of the tribulation will last seven years. So I got to stay in hiding for seven years. So what am I going to do about food, water? What am I going to do about what am I going to do about clothing? So, so will they will they go into hiding? Yeah, people gonna go into hiding. However, how are you going to survive? <laughs> Do you see my point? All right. Your question. Your question was: Could these people hide until Jesus comes again, the second coming of the Lord? And my my answer is: Many of these folks will go into hiding. But can you last those years? Because what are you going to do about food, clothing, water, shelter? You see, now, now think about those who will be left behind in the United States. If you left behind in the United States, your life is going to shift and change drastically. Because we got houses, we got electricity. When we get ready, when we need food, we, we just get in the car and drive and go buy the food. We go to McDonald's. But now I got to go out in the countryside. I don't have a house. I don't know where the next meal coming from. You know, no electronics to help you, nothing. That's going to be a very difficult life. All right. That could be a possibility. I'm, I'm going to come to you next, Sister Watson. Did, did y'all hear uh, KJD? Did you hear what she was just saying? She was saying that, that you, if you never had no time and you, you got to say, she said you could have some family members that may have taken the Marvel Bees and they may be ready to turn you in. What you mean, how? How do you think, why they won't turn you in? <laughs> well, we said for those that are what? Yeah. Okay, false is what I Yes, ma'am. Listen.
This is why we try to express you that during this time period, the two groups that the Antichrist is going to try to wipe out, wipe out are the Jews and those who say he's going to try to wipe them out and try to kill them. And many, many folks are going to get their heads cut off during that time. It's going to be a, it's going to be a bad time. And, and oh, that's what I want to say. Oh, listen. I can clearly see. I can clearly see the devil set this up already. Yes. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. Because the tide against the church is becoming much greater. Yes. See, the, 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 the folks that are anti-church against God, uh, they're trying to make it now as hard as possible for those who are believers to even function in society. To give you an example, now we may not have seen as much of this in Greenville yet, but it's probably a way. Uh, the, the fact is that if, if I'm saying and I'm against uh, homosexual marriages, lesbian marriages, and I have a photography business or I have a, a, a bakery, and because of what I believe, I tell them, no, I cannot uh, do pictures for something I'm against. I, I would not bake a cake for a lesbian couple. You, you got you, you, all across America, uh, they, they're going in, suing these companies, suing these businesses, and, and taking them to court. And so the idea may be, well, I just get out of the business. That's what they want you to get out of. They want you to get out of the business. They don't want you to make any money. They're going to try to make this as difficult as possible. See, eventually, they're going to come out to the church. They're going to come out to the preachers who say, I will not marry a homosexual couple. Uh, they're going to come out to us eventually because of preaching against homosexuality. Now, if, if you don't believe that, um, you, in Canada, they already arrested pastors up there for preaching against homosexual lifestyle. It's already happened. They're going to, going to prison. Uh, they, 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 they said these men and women are committing uh, crimes, uh, racial hatred type of thing. I'm, I'm trying to use the right terminology. You know, hate crimes. And, and right now in America, uh, they're working on these laws in terms of hate crimes. And they're trying to slide that stuff in there right now. They've been working on it. I think the only thing, and I've been saying this all along, I think the only thing that's slowing it up right now is the fact that Donald Trump was president. And I keep telling y'all, I'm not a Donald Trump fan. All right? I didn't vote for Donald Trump. I didn't vote for the other person, I, the other person, the Democrat. I, I had a whole lot of problems with Clinton. I couldn't see myself voting for either one of them. But as I began to look at this thing, a little closer, and with all the foolish stuff that Donald Trump said, and so forth, it seemed to be in the plan of God that he'd be there right now. He, with all the crazy stuff that he says, he's bold enough to say what he thinks. And uh, it seemed that what he has done, he has kind of slowed it up. But see, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned. Now, I, I kind of believe this next election, he, I kind of believe he's going to win. We'll see. But let's say he does win. He gets four more years. What's going to happen eight years from now, 12 years from now, when one of these other individuals who supports all this stuff become president? When Congress is just about overran with those type of individuals. The devil's plan is to try to shut the church down. Because he knows the church, the real church, is going to preach the gospel. You know, it's amazing how oh, the, the, the law and all of them is protecting the homosexuality and giving them their right. But we who are heterosexual, we should have a, a point of view as well. Now, if this is what you believe, then that's your problem. But if I don't believe it, I should not get prosecuted because I choose not to believe it. Here's what you have to look at, Sister Chair, everybody else. I, I, I'm in total totally agreement with what you said, but you know it is this thing is the money. It's a chat. Because, listen, if you do the research, 
you, you look at that, all the, this is this, all the 5% of this country, 5% are really homosexuals and lesbians. But that small group has somehow gotten the power to cause things to change in this country. So they're in a minority, but it's because of what the devil is doing in that group that has become so troubling to those of us who are against it. I think another thing that has helped them out of their only 5%, but because of politicians mm -hmm. yeah. and the media, Hollywood, yeah. those types of, the, because of that, the, you, you, when you talk, when you deal with the media, yeah. if the devil can use the media, that's how he tries to turn the tides in, in the country. Because you got the shows like The Modern Family. Mm -hmm. Every every show that comes on now, they are going to have a homosexual culture. Sure, yeah. It can be just a yeah. simple show. And they're going to show somebody that's a homosexual couple because they're trying to show you that this is common. Yeah. This is normal. This is what's going on now. And so, you know, when, when, when you, if you hate them, if you're doing something against them, oh, that's a hate crime. Yeah. So, that you're, you know, if they can get it in the media and if they can change the minds of our youth, if they can start working on America's youth and get them to believe it, they know that, for, that you for years to come, you you got that tide turned. That's exactly what has been planned. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, doing some reading, and, and what they have said is, for those of us that are my age, a little bit younger than I am, and older, uh, pretty much, they're not worried about us a whole lot, because a lot of us say, we're not going to change. But the younger adult, teenagers, now, that's who they're working on. And see, the devil has strategically uh, went to the media, Hollywood. See, you got a lot of that type of stuff that's out there. And, 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 and because they're out in front of television, television is the avenue to implant, put this stuff in the minds of younger people. See, you, you, have, you have all this stuff that's all this stuff that's coming out now saying that uh, your celebrity movie stars and folks that are in the music entertainment business that before they can move up the ladder to get with it, that they have to sleep with somebody. Mm. And, and most of the time it's somebody of the same sex. Yes. Yeah. Because they're saying that this is on both black and white they said the black entertainers go to Atlanta. And a lot of stuff is going on out there. I wanted to share right quick because time is just about up. Uh, it, it, with some of those tidal waves. Look at what Jesus said in St. Luke 21 and 25. Then we're going to look at one of the things probably like close it out tonight because we just got out of time here. But uh, St. Luke 21 and 25. Now those we just got to talking about. Uh, the sun being darkened and the moon and talked about uh, stars falling which are meteors. Look at what Jesus said here in Luke 21, 25. He said, there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And I talked about that the other week about the, the sea and the waves roar, that seems to be speaking of hurricanes and tsunamis. All right, men's hearts fell at them for fear, looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So you can even see that Jesus spoke of the same thing. He speaks of the same thing. Uh, in this instance, uh, going back to the trumpets, and I think we were looking at what, what, what trumpet we on that. Yeah. Well, verse 13 is a parenthetical uh, scripture. Let's read this scripture, 8 and 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet. 
of the three ages which are yet to sign. And that age is letting you know now you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. It's going to get worse. And in the next three trumpets, you're going to see these wars. Can I just mention them right quick? Won't go into no details. Won't go into the details because we don't have time. Time is out. But I want y'all to listen. I want my young people to listen to this too. The, the first war is in chapter 9 is the release of the demon locusts. The, the bodies have, the, 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 the demon locusts have a body of a horse, the face of a man, teeth like a lion, hair like a woman, got wings to fly, a tail as a scorpion. They're going to be flying all around tormenting men and women for five months and the torment is going to be so bad until they're going to, want, they're going to seek to die, want to die and can't die. For five months God is not going to let anybody die. Come on. Can you imagine seeing something that got a body of a horse, teeth like a lion, face of a man, flying, and got a tail that's going out stinking folks? That's gonna be that's gonna be frightening. The second bowl, uh, from the depths of hell, from the bottomless pit, you will have more than two hundred million uh, demon creatures that are gonna be led by four fallen angels, and they're gonna go forth to punish men. And guess what? It's estimated that I think ninety six million folk may die. The third wall, y'all gonna let me tell about the third wall real, real quick. The third wall, wall is the worst. And it's not even in chapter 9. Y'all go on over, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. And the third wall, Satan himself, fallen angels, who have access to go into the second heaven and the third heaven, to go where they wanna go, they're gonna be thrown to the earth, bound to the earth. Where he would no longer be able to go into outer space or to go into the third heaven to talk to God any longer. And when he's thrown into the earth along with fallen angels, he's going to become so angry until he's going to give it to the Antichrist to, to even increase what he's been doing, what he's going to be trying to do to, to the world. And it's going to get really, really bad then because of the anger. So, uh, as we get ready to close tonight, here again, this book teaches us several things. It teaches us about what's getting ready to happen. But it ought to be a warning to us to, to make sure we got our houses in order, that we are ready for the wrath of the church. You do not want to be here after the rapture of the church. Yes. You, want to be, you want to be in heaven with God. Because it's, going to be, it's really, really going to be a terrible thing. Life on this earth is going to change like never. What Jesus even said that there would be trouble here, really, and what he was really saying, as had never been before. It's referring to Jacob's trouble in some scriptures. And uh, there are a lot of scriptures that talk about how bad things are. It's going to be pretty bad. So let's be sure we're ready for the coming of the Lord. All right. Keep keep the faith you got. We don't we don't have to go back into some of this. I mean I'll probably do a brief review the next time we meet on chapter eight, but we will be looking at chapter nine the next time the Lord's inside. All right, let's receive an 